16 to order, please. Barkdale? Here. Canada? Here. Paul? Here. McGuire? Here. McManus? Mizell? Here. Short? Here. And Taylor? Here. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for prayer. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. here that you have any perhaps illness, God direct their lives. Be with our community, dear Heavenly Father, after this past week. Dear Heavenly Father, we have so much to be thankful for that we went through such a trying time without a loss of life. Be with the folks, dear Heavenly Father, that have damage to their homes, God direct their lives, and get them safely back in this council that each and every decision we make here tonight will be for the better of the community. Be with our armed service personnel, not only on foreign ground, but here in the United States. God direct their lives, bring them safely home to their families. Ask it in our precious name. Amen. I need a motion to approve the minutes of the 627-16 meeting. Mr. Hall, second by Mr. McManus. Gold roll, please. Barco? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Citizens request. I think all we have out there are just a family member or so. Uh, Thanks for thin. That, I agree to that. Also, I've had people to call. I've all had people stop by. It was very, very good, very promising. And thank you all very, very much. Uh, yes, I do. Extreme circumstances. Well, we, uh, you know, uh, I guess I, I know you're not supposed to get better at something like that. But if, if we can, if we continue, you know, to have all the emergencies and. Life-altering events. Uh, we're getting pretty good at it. Well, check. Uh, practice makes perfect. You well, know. We're getting. We're getting You're doing pretty it. good. You been through them all. Uh, actually, uh, it's it. We're still kind of talking about stuff like that. Uh, Wednesday night, when uh, we actually went out the first time, and actually, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of damage up. I'd walked uptown, and there was an awning and stuff like that, but not much damage, really. Very fortunate up there. Awning uh, flew off, tore down three of our decorator lamp poles and, uh, and things like that. But I thought, yeah, you know, maybe we missed that bullet. Of course, we, start, we was getting calls just, and then when I got down in the east end part of the metropolis, yeah. I just could not believe in my own mind. I thought, goodness, you know, we won't we'll never get this thing put back together. And then, uh, you know, just a few hours uh, passed, and, and uh, the line crews and, uh, were uh, on the streets. In fact, it was just, you know, most of the people that from 10th Street uh, and from Metropolis. Uh, down to uh, Fillmore, just couldn't believe how fast uh, the line crews got there and got the, the, the street department, got the roads open, uh, barricades put out, and things of that nature. And it was just, uh, and 24 hours later, you know, 95% of your city uh, primary backup, it was, it's just amazing how good they did do. And uh, 
Mr. Abel was his, I mean, just as soon as it happened, uh, Mr. Abel was I, uh, our uh, IMEA uh, representative uh, on the telephone. And within three hours, we had crews uh, on the ground here. And then before uh, the night ended, we had two more crews here. And uh, I just, you know, I just can't say enough about Light department, street department, stuff like that can do a certain amount of work. But I will say this. It worked out better. Like I said, we're getting better at it. You know, between the staff in the clerk's office, staff in the city hall, everybody, everybody involved, uh, plus Mr. Abel and Tricia and uh, Daniil and all those, we actually started compiling the list. I'm not going to, Mr. Abel wants to go over that, so he is the, uh, I guess he's the, uh, I don't know what he is exactly when it comes to that. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to no, uh, steal yeah, his right. thunder, because no, right. he has prepared a, uh, a very, very nice uh, thing. <laughs> Some of the special people that we want to thank, Harris. I mean, Harris is always willing to step up to the, Plate. They actually furnish places for the uh, out-of-town crews to uh, spend the night. You know, when they, uh, you could, after they work so many hours, of course it wasn't kind of night, it was kind of the daytime when they had uh, got an opportunity to go get a few hours sleep and stuff like that. And Harris donated the rooms, which we're very appreciative. And uh, just so many people that, uh, you know, call and especially today and over the weekend and, you know, at church Sunday, uh, just numerous people, you know, just praising how good the city workers and everything have done. So I personally want to thank each and every one of them. And, you know, as far as I know, uh, we had no uh, personnel issues. There was not any fussing. Uh, you know, taking credit for this or taking credit for that. It's a joint uh, things now. After the dust is all set, we may have a few words, you know, in the, in the following week or something like that. But when things are bad, uh, they really, really do a good job. Uh, so, anyway, I do want to thank each and every one of them. And under the mayor's report, uh, if any of you's had time to look at your uh, agenda for Wednesday, there was an item on there that. Uh, we need to take care of just consent here tonight, and that was for the uh, truck testing, our annual truck testing for our bucket trucks and hydraulics and everything like that. We, we thought we'd probably get by until after that meeting, but we had an opportunity. The trucks had been used so much with heavy work and stuff like that, and Stoney was uh, able to get those moved up to Wednesday. They are actually coming to Metropolis to test our trucks, the hydraulics, and I thought, you know, that would be an opportune time uh, uh, because they are they, they have been used probably in the last three or four days. What Stony equal to what? How many months? Probably six months. Okay, so we had the uh, Stony uh, jumped on there and had the opportunity to get those tested on Wednesday, so I am going to go ahead and have that. We'll talk about it uh, Wednesday, just as an update, and then we'll approve it at the next city council meeting if it's acceptable. Good. Good. Other than that, uh, I have one motion, and I did not. Did you get that price today? I do. Okay. This motion to is accept a change order for lineal foot Unit price for sewer service reconnection work for the combined sewer separation project phase two. What that amounts to is, as you know, we got maps uh, of the uh, services and things like that, but uh, we don't have maps to go back long enough and uh, utilities put in that we don't know about. They put them in their cells and whatever. So there's always a certain amount of sewer lines and uh, water lines and whatever that when you get to ready to uh, put them back in or accidentally we, we hit them or uh, something
so far they've done real well. Uh, but we found a couple of situations like, uh, example, right behind uh, the, uh, the uh, Floyd Sullivan house here on Ferry Street. The house right behind that end. We found a line in there that when we put the new pipes in for the sewer separation, this line was what, four and a half foot deep? No, it was, uh, that's where it was supposed to be. Yeah. yeah it, went, it was about nine and a half feet deep. Yeah. So it went right <laughs> through the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we, we still to this day don't know how. That's where we were at when the storm hit Wednesday. And uh, uh, so rather than to try to redo all that, we're going to bring the person's service out of the back of the property, down the alley on our right of way, and hook into the manhole right there on the ferry. It'll be a single service. But what we're looking for is, for the ones that, they, that were here when we had the uh, Third Street water line uh, put in, Jim Beatman was actually the contractor at that time. Uh, we worked out a agreement with, G with Jim on uh, on-the-job preparation, like if they hit something that uh, needs five foot of new line run, rather than then try to get the uh, street department, the water department, and whatever coordinated to get that done at that time where they're not standing around waiting on each other, uh, Bill is actually uh, willing to go ahead and do that for a, a price on the lineal foot and go ahead, his men will do it. We'll be done right there, right? We're not going to be waiting on him. He's not going to be waiting on us, but I don't know what that price is yet. We talked about $40 a linear foot yeah. for some of the more complicated. He said he'd like to say up to $40 a linear foot or less. So that's what I'll put on the paperwork, and uh, there's things that come into consideration about the depth, the linear backfill, how much gravel. So that's worst case scenario. When it's 15 foot in the ground, we got to backfill with rock and uh, make a connection on both ends. That's going to be $40 a linear foot. That's what we're looking at for the, the, what the service that we mentioned. We've already reconnected five different services that took a little bit of creative thinking to get them back uh, connected to the main. So I'd like to apply that same linear foot uh, to each of the ones that we've done thus far and the ones that we're going to foresee in the future, because we're only, I don't know, 8% done with the project, and we'll have more. Yeah. There's, there's going to be more. Uh, we, we tried to plan around the best we could, but we only know where the main runs and where the clean-out is on the house. We don't have any records of what it does in between, and sometimes the clean-out doesn't mean a darn thing, because <laughs> we've been chasing them, and they don't end up where they're. So. We, we don't, we, we, for the life of us, we can't figure out how these people start working it was running like dead flat for 40 feet and even went a little bit uphill to reconnect to the main. So okay. we could have put it back just like we found it. Well, they just, they just put a brand new clean out there, so that's there for a reason. Had we not gone through the alley and come up the other, we would have to put a pump station on that right there for that one service, which, you know what, you know what kind of problems that causes and stuff like that. It is my recommendation. If it was, uh, Bill is, is very easy to work with. I, I think he's as honest as the day is long. Uh, he, I think he is a man of his word. Uh, my recommendation would be for, uh, to let him approve, to, for the council to approve that. Uh, where will we hit these? He's there, he's on site. Uh, of course, Chad and Doug are right there, so they're going to be working alongside Bill, uh, and they're going to keep track of what goes on and stuff like that that will come into spill. I'll make a motion to accept the change order up to $40 a year old foot. I'll second. 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 Now, this wasn't a part of the $6.2 million project? No. This they, is an they, additional they, project now? Well, 
it's an additional fix. In other words, if, if they have a sewer line, it takes six foot. Well, I mean, didn't we anticipate that from the first project? No. We didn't have that same problem in the first one? Because I remember voting on something like that. Well, any, I'll let Chad kind of explain that. Well, the first project, we had different depths. We were a little bit deeper across town. We did connect. Uh, we There was a large number of change orders on the first project. Sure, that's what I'm saying. And we, to order, to plan for those, we didn't have any reliable means of justification to put out a bid item on how many linear feet of sewer reconnect there was going to be. So we didn't have any way to put it in there at all. Uh, what we planned on was not to have any conflicts, but we can't prove that the conflicts are going to be there either. So going into the project, we kind of knew that there may be some changes. We tried to maybe hint at that as we went, because if we were to put an open bid item on the front end and say, you may or may not have to reconnect 4,000 linear feet of sewer pipe. We would have to be then be liable for that under the contract price. Now, I'll be out there measuring it as they put it in, and it'll be a, a total wrap-up change order at the end. Uh, the bid for the $6 million was based on time and materials as the plans read, and the plans did not show any of these uh, service connects because we don't know where they are. Yeah. We've had we've had really, I mean, I'm not defending any of it, but we've had worse projects. And this is for one of the worst projects I ever seen, and they bid it the same way. Uh, was on James Drive. Mr. Mizell and Mr. Uh, Barfield will remember that very, very well. Uh, all that out there was put in plastic with no tracers on it. So the only way you found it was with a backhoe, and they busted every line all the way down through there. I you know, love that plastic. And we got clay. You and can't dig around in clay. No. The worst part about it is, is uh, there's no way. I mean, we've got a set of plans, but there's no way to do it. And if you don't come up with some some kind of a formula, and they bid it, thinking, <coughs> well, I'm going to have 600 foot or whatever, they're just going to jack the price up, and then on the bottom end, that's going to be a profit for them. I'd rather do it this way than I had them, you know, uh, loaded up on the front end. So. Anyway, we do have a motion. Does that answer your question, Mr. Brown? All right. All right. We, we do have a motion by Mr. Short and a second by Mr. Barfield. Or if you want to make a right here, right? Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. And I do wish it was a way that would bid this stuff. It was all right down the line. We just knew Whew, me too. everything was there, but it's just not, it's just not like that. So no uh, anytime you're under, well, we've got a fairly good set, but you know that 100-year-old lines and stuff yeah, like TV, that, they wouldn't, TV, they wouldn't keep any records the back then. Somebody didn't put a line in, you know. Well, it's no different in your house. Yeah. Well, you know, you think you you live in a house that's 25, 30 years old. Did you live there for 30 years? Do you think where well, you know where all them lines is at? Unless you've got a pretty good map, you'll find it when you dig them up. So, I think that's all I had. Corporate counsel, Mr. Ray. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Uh, this first item, I threw this in here a couple weeks ago. This is when Jan and I were having a conversation. We got, raffles are pretty common. And, and how this came about, if y'all remember, a few years ago, Mr. Eichhorn wanted to turn his facility into a bingo parlor, basically. Well, we got to research him. The state regulates bingo and certain other charitable games. Municipalities regulate raffles, okay? And so, and you know, partly at his request, we adopted an ordinance governing raffles. And, and we're not the only town. If you look at a lot of municipal uh, ordinance books, a lot of towns have ordinances that regulate raffles. But what we found is that a lot of the smaller charities, a lot of the local charities, not only were they not used to having to get this permit when they had a raffle, but a lot of them really, we were charging $50 and $300 if you want an annual permit, and they just don't have it up front. And uh, so
So we had, we had put something in there about, well, the council could waive those, which we could, but a lot of times these people don't come in until the last minute either, and that's, that's the unfortunate side. They don't, they call about two days before they want the permit, and, and, and you know, we can't, we may not have the council meeting for two weeks or whatever. Um, and so one of the thoughts was, well, let's, let's lower the fee for the one-time fee up to maybe $25. We looked at doing that. And the possibility is add the clerk as somebody else that could agree to waive it, like for a local group. But the main reason we started doing this was the feeling that, well, we don't want somebody coming in, a flim-flam artist, and starting a raffle, and then we have no information about that person or who's responsible. And this helps us know where it's being conducted, who's responsible. And that's the primary purpose of of doing it anyway. It's not to make money off of the, uh, the license or the permit. And so I threw this together after I talked to Jan and just stuck it in here. Uh, you may want to send it to ordinance. You may want to uh, rewrite. You may want to do something else. Or you may, if you want to pass it, it's here. Uh, the, the only changes were I changed the thing from 50 to 25 and I, I added the clerk as somebody else that could agree to waive the fee. And that's all. That's Otherwise it just stays the same. Most of that is all non-profit. We get things like Project Hope, for example, we'll call them. They want to do a raffle, but they haven't really got any money, so it's kind of tough to ask them to pay a fee up front. Uh, American Legion was kind of like that, too. They, they, they occasionally want to do one, but they don't have a lot of money to do one up front. And then sometimes you get the kids' groups out of the, out of the school, so that's what we were trying to get to uh, and have a little flexibility so we can waive it, particularly with our own. Mr. Short, you're the chair of the ordinance. Do you have a recommendation you want to go? You want me? You want us to bring this back to your committee, or you want to make us a little different? It looks to me like we're sitting here. Everybody's got a discussion. We can talk about this moment. Okay. Question. Yes, sir. Mr. Mizan. Now, Mr. April, when you said waive, does that mean if somebody come in and ask her for a permit for a raffle, can she? Charge them or not? That's yes. That's so what that, I'm saying. Is that what you're? That's what I'm saying. You okay. waive the fee. You still got to fill out the paperwork, so we know right. who's going okay. to conduct it. I just want to make sure. Right. It, but it would be charge. It would be like if she feels like this is a small group and they, you know, somebody local we know anyway. Okay. Uh, if the FFA comes in or uh, Project Hope or somebody's been here for a long time, uh, she could decide. No, nah, we'll just waive the fee. You know, okay. if they ask. Okay. Well, so we just we need to make sure. Just be, be right, right, right. Okay. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules and place an order this amendment to Chapter 118. I'll second that. I'll second that. I'll second that. Yeah. I'll speak you out more. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Short and a second by Mr. Hall. We do have a second. Call the roll, please. Bartell? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. One thing before Mr. Abel gets into this uh, next little session. Did Daniel copy this in your packet on the do's and the don'ts? Okay. Yes. Where that you have that. If any of your constituents calls and stuff like that, you might urge them to. anybody calls you, there is a list in the clerk's office, there is a list in the mayor's office of everybody that has a permit to cut trees. Now, we made it easy for them. You know, all you've got to do is get a permit. We're not asking for a payment of that permit. It just doesn't cost you a dime. And for all the tree trimmers and things of that in the city that's coming in to help our residents, we're waiving all Dump fees also. So uh, they're, they're able to cut it. They don't cost them anything, you know, for the permits. They load their trucks. They take them to UCC, unload them. We're not charging them a dump fee. And I will tell you this. If you get any calls or anything, we may not be doing it tomorrow. Uh, but we will be doing it in the very 
near future, we do have a permit to, for open bar. So we will be burning at UCC. So uh, just uh, if, you, if you see smoke, uh, don't worry. You know we're not burning anything down real bad. We're just, but we are going to wait a few days to let the uh, the uh, green uh, get a little drier, where it's not quite as, as bad. But uh, we will be doing it. If you want to see a pile of timber right now. Just go by the UCC plant. It looks like Mount Everest out there right now. So have the wind rope suction on a big one. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to have a you'll have to have a really long hot dog stick. So, Mr. Abel, it's your it's your time now. Uh, that's fine. I, and I'll try to be brief here. Um, I I put this on here. There were a few things I wanted to talk about about our storm response. Uh, I call it the highs and the lows. Seems like. Uh, Every time we have a disaster, it brings out some of the best things we've ever seen and some of the worst sometimes. Uh, but I, I wanted to make sure that people were aware, and you guys are aware, following our ice storm in 2009, we actually sat down and developed an emergency response plan for things like this. It's a written plan. Of course, Mr. Davis has refined it multiple times, along with input from people like the chief, the electric department, uh, the police department, and others. And in fact, now we're at the point where we're having quarterly meetings and we're starting to practice on these things. The mayor says you get better at practice. Well, we actually are practicing on, on handling these things. Uh, but those plans call for a very orderly response to any kind of emergency. And safety is always our top priority. Safety not only for our residents, but safety for our workers that are out there responding. But one of the first things that we do is we get out and we have to we check and make sure there's not the bottom. You know, we don't have someone, in a case like this, we don't have somebody that's trapped in a building. We don't have somebody trapped in car would have reports of injuries or, or worse, potentially fatalities. And, and our, our fire department guys, our police department, our rescue people, they get out and they look. And that's one of the first steps we take. We also secure what we do have on the ground uh, in terms of like our, our, uh, uh, our substations. Uh, we lock those out so that uh, those switches open and, and, and lock those out so that uh, uh, in the event, now this time, obviously, quite often we have power out, just Amarin goes out. We don't want Amber coming back on, and we got people on the ground working, and our switches are closed in. So we, we throw all that out, and we make sure before anything gets put back on, everything's clear, everything's safe, everybody knows what's going on. We, we, we sometimes communicate and double communicate and triple communicate. Um, uh, we do, after we've made this effort to, uh, to make sure everything's safe, we've checked on people that might be hurt or if there were any injuries. Then we, then we start sort of our assessment, and that's going on too all the time. Where did we get hit? What got taken out? What's been damaged? What do we need to do? What's the most, and, and we, start, we start fulfilling the plan. And uh, uh, when it comes to electric, uh, you hear us talk all the time about primary, you hear us talk about uh, circuits. And uh, we have a number of circuits. We also have what we call a tie line. And the tie line is a big line that just does just that. Ties the what we call the uh, used to be called the east sub, the one behind Southgate, to what is the south sub right here. So that we have the ability when we get power through one of them and through that tie line, go through the other and feed back feed, if you will. But customarily, this one might feed certain circuits and that one might feed certain circuits. But with the combination of the tie line, we have the ability if we got power to one of them to feed all of our circuits eventually. Um, the uh, um, and so we. We begin that process of assessing, we begin that process of looking at what we might be able to do. And the goal is to, obviously we have to get that primary back up. We have to get that tie line clear. That's the backbone. We can't, it doesn't make any sense to come out to your house and put your service line back up. Or come to your neighborhood and run this secondary line back up that's going to serve three or four houses or five houses if the backbone's not up. Because the power's not going to get there, okay? Um, and uh, so... When people wonder what are they doing at first, well, first, like I say, they're, they're assessing, and that assessment goes on, well, this time it went on all night, because Trisha and I got to participate in it. Uh, she and Verbal and I drove the drove all the circuits, uh, and looking for obstructions, looking for things that were down, things that had to be put back 
before we could energize that circuit. I was with them for a while. My nerves wouldn't last. <laughs> well, I mean, if you can imagine driving down the street with Verbal hanging out one window, me out the other shining flashlight, and you. you don't know where the car is going. Yeah. Uh, and we know because the police stopped her at one point because uh, she ran a stoplight. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, they, they, uh, they were kind of forgiving since she was trying to get the power back on. But, uh, but anyway, that's, that's part of the process. And, and it's not just electric folks, it's street folks, it's water folks, it's an entire team clearing streets, clearing alleys, clearing areas where the brush is taking over the lines and stuff because it's falling on them, and uh, getting stuff out of the way so that work crews can get in. Um, and then once we get it cleared, once we get it reassembled, um, one at a time as we, as we determine it's safe and we've gone out and we've looked at everything, then we begin to bring them back up. And the focus is always on getting those things up first that we know are safe and that will serve the most people that we can safely do at one time. Um, as a consequence, it doesn't mean that every disaster, this this ward or this street or whatever, will be up first. Uh, it all depends on where the damage is and what we can what we can bring back safely first. Um, and again, the goal is helping the most number of people. The, the hard part sometimes for people to realize is, well, my neighbor's got power and I don't. Well, very well could be that your neighbor's on a different circuit than you are. And that happens. I mean, there are streets, there are blocks. And it's, yeah, and it goes odd directions sometimes. And, and, you, and you wonder, well, why has he got it? Well, he's on a different circuit. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, but we have to make sure it's all clear before we throw it back in. Throwing back in those reclosers uh, is an experience. As, as these guys taught me uh, last week, uh, standing inside that, that substation, they throw a recloser in. Uh, it, it'll make you, you, know, you wonder if you need to go home and change clothes. So it's a little loud, it's a jolt in there too. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, we do that. And, and like I said, this clearing is going on constantly. And then eventually, as a part of the plan, once we've got everything restored, and like I said, we put the backbone up, then we begin to put other primary up, then we put secondary up, and then we work on service lines. And, and so it narrows it down. We get the bulk of it done, and we get a little more done, and finally we get down to a few isolated parts that we have. Maybe are a little more difficult. We get those put up. Um, you know, I, I'm proud to say with the street department, the water department, the electric department, and all the staff working together, <coughs> we had 95% of the power back on by about 9.30 on Thursday morning. And then we'd lost it all as of right after the storm. We had 100% up by about 5.30, 6 o'clock on Friday. Uh, we filled in all the pockets here and there. And we did it systematically. And that's a new thing a little bit for us. Um, we utilized a number of people to gather these call-ins, which are very helpful. Uh, we document these call-ins. We put them in a spreadsheet. And then we began to organize them by territories and areas. And then we would, as we would break, uh, Stoney would have these territories assigned to various work groups, and there'd be a street group that needs to come along and help them clear if need be, there'd be his guys that are putting this stuff back up, um, and then when we break again, we'd come back together and figure out, okay, check off what we got done, and give that back to the communication people that are sitting here taking the call so they can tell, hey, we're about to your neighborhood, or no, here's where we're at, but you're still, you're coming up on the list, and, and we kept these lists available, and, and we're getting better at that, that technology is going to help. Um, the, uh, uh, but it all came together because of the teamwork. I mean, it wasn't just electric. It wasn't just water or sewer or street. It was everybody. No, nope, everybody worked across classifications. That was what I think made this really work. Um, the uh, and a lot of them worked a lot of hours. Some of them worked 39, 40 hours in a row, uh, and then turn around, come back, work another 14 or 15 the next day after they finally did get a little sleep. Um, the uh, we used, like I say, as mayor said, we used all our administrative staff to fill in gaps, and, and we found some important places that they can all play a role, from communication with citizens <coughs> to documenting areas to figuring out what's being done where and, and, and getting this put in a, in a format that we can, uh, uh, we can manage. Um, we, with the, uh, we did a lot of this with some help, too. We had IMUA, as mayor mentioned, we had, a crew, we had two crews from Highland, Illinois, Crew from Waterloo, Illinois, that stayed the entire time. Crew from Breeze, crew from Carlisle, and a crew from Flora. And we owe them a great uh, debt of gratitude, a real debt of gratitude. Um, we had our favorite daughter, Verbal, with us. Uh, at the uh, uh, And her team, too, because uh, while she didn't
didn't bring anybody. She called on guys that are that are substation specialists to make sure when we were taking things out and taking things back on that we were doing it in the right sequence and all. Uh, so we didn't have any problems. Uh, sometimes we all think we know how to do it, and got it but after 35 or 40 hours of, of being out there, uh, it's nice to have somebody you can call and say, hey, am I doing this step right? Is this the right step? And here, even verbal does that. So uh, we have a lot to be thankful for there. And then I think the other thing we witnessed from the standpoint of a high, uh, we witnessed a lot of neighbors helping neighbors, a lot of people looking out for each other, and that says a lot about the character of our people in our town. Um, Friday night I was really touched. Um, uh, there's a guy, probably some of you know, by the name of Gary Robinson. Maybe you knew him. Yeah, I think he passed away this weekend. But Gary was still having visitors on Friday night when the power went out for the second time. And one of his neighbors came and asked me. He saw me out there and said, how soon? And he said, you know, that's, he told me about Gary's situation. I know Gary. I knew things weren't going well. And uh, But he said, you know, Gary, Gary didn't send me over here. Gary, Gary doesn't even know I'm here asking to get his power back on. And he said, uh, he said, he's not worried about anything. He said, he, uh, uh, he said he's worried about his neighbors. He said, everybody come visit him. He'd ask, how'd your house do? How's your, how's your family okay? And stuff. So he said, never once asked about anything for himself. He never once complained. And I think that speaks very highly of the types of citizens that we have here. Um, I said there are a few lows, and it does. It sometimes, sometimes these kind of crises bring out some of the worst examples. Of people. Um, we had some complaints. Uh, I'll tell you, describe the nature of them. They were, I thought they were kind of ridiculous, but we have them nonetheless. Um, unfortunately, and oddly enough, some of them came from some of our more affluent neighborhoods. Uh, one couple called ten times to complain that their butter was melting in their refrigerator. Okay, why didn't we get their power back? I don't know. I don't understand that. Um, we had uh, um, we had a, another gentleman call, um, and he wanted to be he wanted to come up and line us out about a plan that we needed to plan because his power wasn't on and we needed to plan. He should have been on first. And uh, we have a plan. We assure you, we have a plan. And the plan doesn't isn't based on where you live, how much money you make, or uh, what you do. It's based on, as we said, safety first and then accomplishing the most for the most number of people. Uh, another thing that we've had a problem with in the past, and we had some this time too, is people driving into these work zones. And, uh, I, you know, it's it's hard to believe, but we, you get people that just want to go out and look, and they just drive through. They drive past barricades. They drive over the cones. Um, and uh, that not only puts, I mean, it puts them in jeopardy. It puts people's lives in jeopardy. It puts our workers in jeopardy. Um, the... Uh, no matter how many times we ask and we plead and we say, look, don't do it, the mayor writes orders, we put it on the news, we put it in the radio, please don't do this. Uh, we still have some that do. And uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the worst offenders that we've had are um, well, former aldermen. Uh, I, I, that I don't understand. Uh, got a former pizza maker that likes to drive through it all the time. Um, and our mayor wannabe. Not only decides to drive through, but he got out and decided to campaign the men while they're trying to clean up and get power on. And I, I mean, and I'm, I'm calling it out for what it is. That's just despicable. Okay? Should be. Thank That's you. despicable. Uh, citizens shouldn't have to wait on their power because somebody wants to get out and campaign to be mayor. That's ridiculous. And, uh, uh, and, and frankly, I know that because I got it firsthand from the guys, and I got it firsthand from the guy that actually had to run him off so we could continue to work. So, so be it. Maybe it's not politically correct to say that, but that's that's the way it was. Um, some lessons learned. One thing we learned, we learned a little more about using our technology. We're using Excel spreadsheets, and, and we're starting to be able to break this down into territories. And um, we had several discussions about if we have Internet available, we're going to use the, the, some of you guys may have heard of the program Dropbox. It's a very basic, simple program, but it's where we can share this information much easier. We'll use that so that the folks at City Hall answering and the folks at the police station answering will have access to that information in front, of them, in front of them in real time so they know where we're working so we can tell people where we're working. We can't always say, well, yes, ma'am, you'll power be on in two hours. But we can say, yes, we have you on our list, and we've got people in your neighborhood so we know you're going to get there. Um, or you're on this list, and here, we've got
gotten some of these things right around you, so you're probably not going to be too much longer. Um, or we can tell them if we're having problems in a particular area, too, because we can document that. Um, if we don't have the Internet, then we'll just have to keep using Excel spreadsheets, but even that's better than what we've done in the past. Um, we've used our non-public work staff this time, and we, we learned a lot about doing that. Uh, there's a lot of places they can fill in. That, that way we don't have to take our public works guys and have them out here maybe doing as much documentation. They just keep working. We'll get somebody that's writing down what's going on, and, and uh, we'll get them in there and bring that information back to us, and that again keeps our public informed. Um, and then I think the last thing is we're going to have to develop it. We're going to have to have, a, as we do these exercises and workshops, we're going to have to address this issue of how do we control some of these work sites better, and how do we control our traffic, do our traffic control a little better. Uh, maybe we've got to use more physical barriers. Um, I know the, the one instance I witnessed, the mayor and I went down to put barricades down by Chuck's house because everybody kept driving down through. Well, that's where the Amherst guys were. Well, that's the high line. we got to get the high line back. I mean, that's what we need, and the faster we can get that high line back, the easier it is to get people on and keep them on because we can balance our two substations and all. Uh, people want to drive right through that. I mean, there, and I don't know why, there's 15 to 20 bucket trucks down there and 30 guys rumbling around. They can't even back out and get the poles out because we got people driving through there, and they want to drive through and pass the cones and over the cones and stuff. Uh, my truck's a police officer. He, he offered to shoot anybody that we needed. A lot of zookas there. Yeah, but, uh, but seriously, we are going to have, that's something we are going to have to address. Um, it may take some uh, tougher ordinances and penalty permissions. I think, to, I think eventually what it's going to come to, I think you're going to have to leave police officers on site. And if they're in restricted areas and they're driving around barricades, I think you give them a ticket. I, I know they did that in Brookport, uh, but they were able to close off Brookport a little easier. So you, you had one easier. in, one out. We, we, we don't have that luxury, but Maria we're going to have to work on that. Because that, Maria can attest to that. That was something early on, at least, in the first several hours, that we had, it was dangerous. Uh, but I know even, in, even I think it was either it was Thursday, yeah, it was Thursday evening, um, I went to drop some water off and stuff with the work crews, and there was a lady that pulled in there, and when I walked past, she said, uh, she looked at me and, I, and said, uh, I guess I shouldn't be here, should I? Ma'am, you have to ask that. Probably not. She said, well, I just came over to visit. And I said, ma'am, you're driving into this work zone. Well, yeah. And I said, and you see those people out there that are sitting outside that are hot and haven't had power for now 24 hours? They'd really appreciate it if they got power back. And, and then she drove off. But it was that's that's the kind of thing we got to work on. Um, so anyway, enough said. We, we did learn some lessons. We're going to keep getting better at it. Gosh, I hope we don't have any more anytime soon. Uh, uh, we're about to say we're about too old for this, most of us. Uh, the, uh, 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 anyway, the last thing I was going to hit on my list, I've talked quite a bit tonight, the last thing I got on my list, three things on the energy update. I gave you guys a uh, thing called the Muni Line or whatever uh, publication in here, and there's about three things in this. I hope you take the time to read. One thing I was going to tell you about, we the Energy Efficiency Program, and I'll mention it again Wednesday, he is back. I'm going to get you everybody an application that we have now. There's going to be a series of applications, but the one we have is on the lighting. And I know in the past a lot of you have directed people to us with lighting projects and get you the new application. We do have about $20,000 available to us between, between now and next April. So if you've got people that are interested, may not be quite as generous as in the past, but it's still going to be a good program. So. Likewise, the same thing you can tell people. We still have money for recycle my fridge. Somebody's got an old fridge. They want 50 bucks for it. We can give them a number. They call. They arrange an appointment. Somebody comes and picks it. As long as it's running, they'll pick it up, and they'll send you a Visa card for $50. Uh, and, uh, uh, energy markets, there's a really good article in here uh, about, and it explains in very good terms, what's wrong in Illinois with our energy markets. Uh, I suggest you read it. And finally, uh, there's some things in here about safety and OSHA, some changes that are coming our way. We have to follow them, too. It has to do with our record-keeping and accountability. Uh, and then there's lastly a little art, little chart in there. I never realized how much water we're all supposed to drink when it's hot outside and we work outside. So uh, uh, it's amazing how much water. I tried that. I passed out from the whole water. <laughs> I think you drown if you drink as much as, as it says in there. But, yeah. That's all I have. Sorry for taking so long.
Well, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Maria and uh, Linda. Uptown, really the only problem we had in the Uptown District was one awning from the old Chamber of Commerce ripped off, come across the street, tore down them three light poles, damaged four of my flowers too. I'm the wrong with it, but uh, Blaine come and pick them up today to replace them flowers. Uh, and uh, we had a back on the awning actually struck Tim Lawson's old drugstore building. Knocked the windows out. Tim had Johnny uh, uh, Johnson no, no, uh, Adams. Adams up there getting it off. You know, it wasn't his awning, but he was taking it down, stacked it in the street very neatly and things like that, and stacked the poles, the damaged light poles on top of it. So you got a back wheel in the middle of the street and a truck and about eight foot between the end of the backhoe and the curb. And them cars was bound and determined to find between that backhoe and that curb. I'm standing out in the middle of the street, waving my hands, trying to direct them, you know, before they got there. So this little vehicle popped up down there, and I thought, they, don't they know them hand signals and stuff like that? And he started walking there and it was and them taking pictures. So I just went back the other way. I didn't want any bad publicity and stuff like that. But that's just an example. And, I mean, they'll just drive right up on top of you. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just very, uh, it's, it's dangerous. I mean, the backhoe guy can't see that well. And if he doesn't have somebody out there, and if, uh, you know, so... Anyway, probably, I think that probably was our single most problem, especially when it's dark, you know, out there in the middle of the night and stuff like that. And uh, it's just, you know, those guys can't see you, and, uh, you know, so uh, we're going to have to figure out a little, a little better something there than to, uh, to control that traffic just a little bit better. But like I said, job well done to anybody. Does anybody else have anything they want to say for you? Next item, committee reports. Un unfortunately, we haven't had any committees. Uh, but what our last committee will meet? Yeah, we will Wednesday have one coming up Wednesday. Yes. And we have uh, quite a few items on that agenda, so I encourage everybody to be here. We're going to have some updates on the uh, uh, search separation. We're going to have some updates on the bar screen at the wastewater treatment plant. We're going to have an update on the next phase of the revamp of the freshwater system at the filtration plant. So there is going to be some very good information there. Department heads, Stoney. Nothing at this time. Jason. I got nothing. Frank. I concur. I have nothing at this time. Tracy, you have, you have anything <laughs> for that? Chad, I think, doesn't have one. But, uh, old business. Miss Binberry did. Did you work anything out? I have. Okay. Not definitely yet. I, mean, I, I want to make sure they got that. I did make a call to one of the uh, uh, contractors who are going to try to get hold of them, and I gave her Mr. Pullen's number for the house behind there. And they're supposed they're to be getting back to me. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. <coughs> Miscellaneous reports. Finance. I want to revert back to the new business. Okay. Back to Adams, excuse me, and I want to welcome Mr. John Taylor to our chamber here. I thought I've uh, known him many years, and I think he made a great recommendation. Well, Mr. Barfield, you trained him. Yeah, well, yes. so, you know, I've known him quite a while. He's right. a, a very good person, sir. Well, he trained know. me, but not for this. <laughs> You know, John's, uh, Mr. Taylor is going to be a great asset. You know, it's, it's been, it's been a good, it's, it's been a good for the new, but still again, it's, uh, you know, we're always, we're always, uh, you know, Mr. Carroll sat in that seat for many, many, many years, and, and uh, his, 
his knowledge and stuff will be missed and stuff like that, but we're moving to a new era, and we're glad to have John on board. Thank you. Glad to be here. I have one other item. Actually, we will have a tourism meeting here tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the East Chamber. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. And I guess you all did notice that the uh, Welcome Center is open. It's it full every night and every day. Mr. Mayor, uh, we need to pray for a great police department, our fire department, as they are going through uh, tough and dangerous jobs. And uh, we're, we should be very thankful that our community uh, has such good race relations. They do. They're under a lot of stress right now. They are. I can't imagine, uh, really, you know, what they are going through. And it's not just police officers. I mean, it can be, any, be anybody in uniform. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Firefighters so, and all. Amen. And, uh, they're all. We're, we're all in a in a stressful situation. But all in that situation too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I noticed today but, where they they had some uh, uh, in a city. City Council, but it was in the uh, uh, bailiff in a courthouse. Actually, two people or three people actually was killed. I heard that. And uh, yeah. one, in, one in serious condition. So we need to pray for that. So. But yeah, it's just people over 5'5. Five, five. Me and Billy. She so. <laughs> <laughs> goes over it. She's over it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Chief isn't here, but Chief uh, Morris is. Well, well this is. I want you to know you're in her prayers. Right up, same way. And, and Chuck is actually, you know, a officer down at Karnak, so, mm -hmm. uh, and, that's and, bad and by you know, they don't, they don't know any, uh, parameters and stuff like that, so, anyway, uh, we, we, as Mr. McGuire said, we should be thankful that we live in a community like this, you know, where that, uh, uh, but stranger things have happened, so we all need to be conscious of what goes on and stuff like that, but, uh, Financial report, payment of salaries, payroll, and contract bills. Payroll. Motion second. Moved by Mr. McGuire and Mr. McManus. Call roll, please. Bartell? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Excuse me. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. Contagra? Yes. Payment of miscellaneous bills. <laughs> Moved by Mr. McManus, second by Mr. McGuire. Call the roll, please. Bartell? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. We, uh, we are not going to have a need for an executive session. We actually uh, had to cancel the uh, union uh, Bargaining, for collective bargaining, we had a meeting for Friday morning at 9, and uh, we did uh, cancel that, and we are going to reschedule that. We have some dates also. Thank you, sir. 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 Mr. Barfield doesn't care. We'll probably have a closed session on Wednesday. Sure. And I'll update you on where we're at. We're not my part of the thing at this point, but uh, we, we, need to, we need to at least get some. We're still in negotiation. But we are still in negotiation. How's it going on uh, I drafted part of that last week before I got finished with uh, the sidetrack a little bit, but we're close. Well, I will say, uh, as far as just. Guess what you classify as regular business? It wasn't much went on around here except storm control uh, Wednesday night, uh, all day Thursday, uh, Thursday night, Friday night. Uh, the uh, street crew worked actually. Uh, I will give you an update on that street. Stoney and his crew decided that they had just as soon stay. Friday night until everyone was hooked up. Every customer in the city of Metropolis that was capable of having power had power before the light department went home. 
that give them Saturday off. Street Department went home at 6.30, I believe, on Friday evening, and they chose to work a half a day on Saturday. Now, what we're doing, if you get any calls, we talked about it all over the weekend. I talked to the Street Department guys. I, I talked to myself a lot about it. Uh, didn't get very good answers, but anyway, uh, decided that, you know, there's no need in making more people mad than you have to make mad. We, me, I, I admit it, I'm, I'm a kind of a creature of habit. You know, if my, if my trash is supposed to be picked up on Thursday, I want my trash picked up on Thursday. So what we did today, we put, they're still cutting, dragging to the street, and doing a lot of tree work in the second and third board. Today, Monday, is the first board pickup for limbs and debris. Normally. That's Monday's is that day. So we put both crews with both pieces of equipment in the first board. Art told me today we got about three-fourths of that done today. They didn't have quite as much damage as in that board. Uh, still enough, but not as much as there is in the rest of it. So hopefully, by lunch tomorrow, we will have the first ward picked up. So their limbs are off the street. After lunch, we'll start on the second ward and put all the crews in the second ward. Now, it's probably going to take longer for that second ward because, like I said, from Ferry Street down to Ophia, is pretty tough in the second war. Uh, but we're going to stick in there until we get the biggest part of that picked up. Then we'll move to the third war, and then we'll move to the fourth war. Uh, and it's going to work out pretty good because those, the second and the third, I think, had the biggest part of the big damage. You know, that's not to say, but, you know, uh, in, in Rick's update and stuff like that, it just, it, it, just, uh, it just amazes me how good, and uh, some people are, you know, uh, you, you got maybe a, a, a single mother or an elderly man or an elderly woman, it doesn't matter what you live in, it, it doesn't matter, it, it's yours and it's your home. Doesn't matter whether it costs twelve thousand dollars or three hundred twelve thousand. Doesn't matter. That's their home. But we had people that had lived in mobile homes that their mobile homes was completely destroyed. Now it didn't blow them off, but it put trees plumb through them. Those people were thankful to be alive. That's right. I mean, they thanked the good Lord. Nobody got hurt in their family. They, they couldn't even put a tarp over them. I mean, there wasn't there anything there to put over them. Across the street, you had somebody that lived in a moderate uh, uh, home, you know, uh, not bad, not fancy, but it's home. They was out helping the lady across the street and their neighbors because they literally had no damage. Both sides was tore all to pieces. They had no damage. And like Mr. Abel said, then you got... Folks that had no damage to their homes, and and uh, you know that were just rude, you know, unthankful uh, guys out there. One night it rained three inches. That line crew and the street department crew did not miss one wick. They wasn't whining and crying because they was all that wet. You know, they was up in them bucket trucks. And the fire department and the, and the police department's the same way. They're out there uh, doing ever what it takes. But, you know, after an event like this, and I don't mean to be preaching, but I do mean to be preaching, we ought to all be down on our hands and knees thanking the good Lord uh, that we're all alive. And, and um, the, the worldly goods and the material things can be replaced. Lives can't be replaced, nor, uh, you know, things that said in, uh, in uh, just meanness, you know, uh, that, that won't ever be taken back. I mean, that 
going to stick with you for a long, long time. Yeah, back in one guy said down there, he said, he was telling us, sir, he said, we're just lucky. He said, no, you ain't lucky, you were blessed. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So, you know, and we didn't, I, I didn't have any damage in my house, you know. Uh, so I don't like trees. I cut all my trees down. I didn't have one there. Uh, but, uh, you know, we were fortunate. Uh, it, it, it stopped just before... It stopped the house before it got to South Gate Personal. That's where it stopped, right there. J.D. Holly's old house was the last damage going that way. You know, I'm not saying there wasn't a limb or something like that, but we as a community have a lot to be thankful for. I will say that we had immediately uh, uh, Congressman Shifka Skull, uh, Representative Phelps Skull, uh, Durbin's office called, and uh, to my surprise, we actually had a call from the governor. I, he probably thought he was to call in Kentucky or something. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, he did call. So uh, we'll just move on now. And uh, I do want to thank all of the aldermen and stuff like that for all your support through all the bad times and stuff like that. And it helps sometimes. You know, if you take care of, of your constituents and stuff like that, let us know. Uh, I'm not saying that we're going to move them in front of anybody, but we'll certainly get them on that list. So, uh, worked out well. I'm, I'm proud of everybody that was involved. We do need a motion to adjourn. Or move. I'll, I'll second. <laughs> Yes. Thank you.